All right, let's talk about some Pro Tools shortcuts. Okay, so the basic idea for today is that I want to talk about some shortcuts that I find to be very useful, very helpful in Pro Tools. And the I guess the cohesive thought for what tie all these different shortcuts together is the idea that they're all kind of buried within the main part of the keyboard. So you might not know they're there if you don't have like a shortcut keyboard or if you haven't dug into shortcuts so much. And that's why I'm making this video. So some of these I've talked about before on the channel. So some of these might be familiar to you. Some of them I don't think I have mentioned on the channel before. So the first one I want to talk about is nudging. So you might be familiar with this one, but basically I'm going to highlight a clip. So I'm going to hover on the bottom half of this clip with my my grabber tool right so I'm hovering with the smart tool active bottom half of the clip gives you the grabber tool and actually by looking at my session right now I know how much it's going to move by I know it's going to move by a whole measure when I hit the nudge shortcut so the nudge shortcut is going to be comma and period so that's what I use for nudging so comma on your keyboard and then period so comma goes to the left period goes to the right so comma goes earlier in your session period goes later and the way that I know how much it's going to move by is actually by looking up here. So it says nudge right here. And this is the little icon for one measure. And if I click here, I can actually change the unit of measurement and then also what the actual value is. So if I want, one thing that I do a lot is I'll nudge things by 0 0.001. Um, so one millisecond, right? So it's the, the smallest unit of time that you can do when it's in minutes and seconds. And the reason why I do that, I'll zoom in so we can kind of see it happening. So I'm going to hit comma and move it forward and then period to move it back. And I actually had a video about this. I think it was my beat making tips video where I talked about this and I'll do this a lot with samples. So for example, snare samples, I'll try moving it forward by a few milliseconds and then backwards by a few milliseconds. So it's slightly off the beat and that um, helps change the feel of the song, right? So sometimes we'll do that in a chorus, we'll move it forward to make it feel more forward and like things are moving along differently. Um, and sometimes I'll do it over the whole song too, right? So when you do it over the whole song, there's usually one way that feels better than the rest and kind of matches the vibe of the song. And it kind of depends on like how lively the song is, how quick it is, how much energy there is in the song versus how like laid back and chill the song is. Um, oftentimes I see it correlating with that. So it'll be like sooner if it's a more lively song. But that's beyond the point. The point is that we have this nudge shortcut, right? And so comma or period. And if you want to change the unit, you just go up here to change the unit. Now, the next one I want to show you is another one that I have shared before on this channel. And I use this one a lot. And it's the idea that if you highlight a range of time and then you use either the semicolon to go down or the P on the keyboard to go up. And again, this is in your main keyboard. It'll move your highlight by a track each time you hit it and it'll retain your highlight. So I'll use this a lot. Like, for example, if I have this track is inactive, but if I have automation on one track, that I then want to duplicate down to another track, I can highlight it, do Command C, and then do semicolon to go down, and I'll go past the track and then back up to just get that automation graph and not also highlight the whole track with the actual audio on it. Um, and then I'll do Command V to paste, and there we go. And so usually when I'm copying something, there isn't this big difference here when I paste it in because it's probably a track that has some similar stuff going on. But if I wanted to have the same kind of increase without this change here, I could then use my trim tool and bring it up and kind of match the level there. And then usually what I'll do is I'll hit tab to get to the break point here and zoom in and just make sure everything looks okay and there isn't like a quick jump or anything. But that's P and semicolon. I use that a ton. Um, if you want to use it, you can use it to copy and then semicolon paste things onto new tracks. Um, it's really helpful for that, for, for example, retaining that uh, location, that physical locations for the file. So you don't have to, you can just highlight it. You know, you don't have to actually place your cursor at the exact right spot, but you can highlight it, copy, hit semicolon, down and paste. And now it's pasted in the same exact location. And I didn't have to find this exact spot on the timeline where I started my my highlights. So super helpful. I use that one all the time. All right. So the next one that I wanted to show you, I'm just going to hit tab to go begin this clip and zoom in a little bit. I have two clips here and I wanted to show you the idea that you can use D, F, and G on your keyboard to do fades. So if I click here and I go, hey, I kind of want to fade at the beginning of this clip and I want it to be kind of long like this, right? So like ending around here, I can just hit D and it'll make a fade for me from the beginning of the clip to where my cursor is. Same thing for the end of a clip. If you want to do a fade out, you just hit G on your keyboard. Done. 
And then the other one is crossfade. So this is kind of a huge crossfade. I usually wouldn't do one like this, but you get the idea. If you hit F, it'll create a crossfade for you. So those are really helpful for making really quick fades. Sometimes I'll, if I do option tab to go to the end of this clip and then zoom way in, I'll just kind of drop it there and hit G. And it's, you know, it's only marginally faster than like if you want to use the tool and hover at the top of the clip and then hold command because I'm in the grid mode. So I have to hold command to be able to loosely drag this around and not have it snap to the grid. It's only marginally faster than that idea, right? So you can either use your mouse or you can drop your cursor and hit G. It's not um, a big difference in timing, but it's just whatever you prefer, whatever you prefer to use. So again, that's D to do a fade in, F to do a cross fade, and G to do a fade out. And it's just gonna do the fade from wherever your highlight is or wherever your cursor is dropped. And one good thing to keep in mind is that like, if you highlight, let me actually delete this end so it's not already faded, but if you highlight, a huge chunk here and then you hit G it's not going to work you have to just drop your cursor where you want it and then hit G um, same thing for D right so if I highlight up here and I hit D it's not going to work and if I zoom in here I can see I don't have a fade already so what I really need to do is just drop the cursor and hit D so these two for some reason D and G don't work with highlights they just work with dropping the cursor but then with the crossfade with F you do have to do a highlight because of the nature of a crossfade right So the next one is one of the first ones that people tend to learn so you might know this one already but it's the idea that you can zoom with R and T and I use this a lot right so you can zoom with R and T it's one of those keyboard commands focus mode shortcuts so if this yellow A to Z is not highlighted yellow if it's like this then you'll notice that it won't work R and T will not work I'm hitting it right now and it is not zooming right so you do need that active for it to work but once you have it active it works great so rnt will allow you to zoom you can also zoom with command and then the brackets and that'll work regardless of whether the a to z is lit up yellow but rnt to zoom is really helpful i'll usually i'll like drop my cursor somewhere and be like that's where i want to zoom in and then i can use rnt to zoom or i can use command brackets i kind of switch between the two um that's just me for some reason. And then the other one I wanted to show you, I'm just gonna click on these fades and delete them really quick. And you'll notice it's not deleting the underlying audio. If you're not familiar with fades, that's how that works. So you can delete them really easily. Um, but I wanted to show you some trim shortcuts. So we have A and S in Pro Tools and those allow us to do trimming. So if I drop my cursor somewhere on a clip and I hit A, it's gonna trim out from the beginning of the clip to my cursor. And then if I drop my cursor somewhere on a clip and I hit S, it's going to trim from the end of my clip to the cursor. So, and again, let me drop my cursor right here and let me turn this off. If this is not on, then A and S will not work. So I'm hitting it right now and neither side is trimming, right? So A, S, not trimming, right? But if I turn it back on, now if I hit S, it'll trim to the end, from the end, really. And then if I hit A... Oh, well, I'm not on the actual clip anymore. So if I hit A, now it'll trim for me. Let me just undo this really quickly. And I'm going to see if I can just summarize really quick for you all. All right, to summarize the quick shortcuts that are buried in the keyboard, I can do comma and period to nudge things backwards and forwards. I can do P and semicolon to move my highlight up and down. P is up, semicolon is down. I can do D, F, and G to do quick fades. I can do A and then S to do quick trims from the beginning or the end. And I can do R and T to zoom. And that's it. I know today is a bit of a shorty video. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what other shortcuts you tend to use a lot that are kind of buried in the keyboard. I would love to hear them. I'm always looking for new shortcuts. And you know, other than that, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I would appreciate all of that stuff. I come out with new videos every Wednesday and I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. And the big thing that I've been focusing on there lately is we have the discord server we're doing a book club on the discord server that's all about audio engineering and music production i do early release videos there and there is some additional content on my website for patreon patrons so check that out if you feel so inclined and thank you so much for hanging out okay i did it i did it and my camera didn't overheat i am i've been struggling with my camera overheating because i have an ancient gopro it's a well it's not like ancient ancient but it's a gopro hero 7 it's one of the little black uh, GoPro cameras and it's pretty old and what happens is if I film and I take a little too long it overheats and then it stops 
And uh, then I have to put it in the fridge for a little bit and then I take it out and finish my video. And I don't like doing that, it's not ideal. So I've started filming fewer videos at once. I'm doing fewer batch video filmings, which is okay because I've also been busier so I don't have like as much time all at once that I can spend on things sometimes. But I've been thinking about getting a new camera. So if anyone has any suggestions for a new camera, I would love to hear it. Um, I've looked into a few cameras and they're very expensive and it makes me cry. So I've been trying to figure out what I want to do. Maybe I should just bite the bullet. Um, I don't know. I don't know what makes sense and what warrants what. But uh, it's a it's a thing I've been thinking about. So if you have recommendations, let me know. Okay, bye.